We now move on to adult. We now move on to adult care and health. OSC, Councillor Madden. Madam Mayor, I move the adoption of paragraph two. There are speakers. Was that short enough? <laughs> Councillor Randall. Um, members may be aware that um, at the um, Adult Care and uh, Health Overview and Scrutiny Committee, our side supported the recommendations put forward in um, the Supporting People paper uh, with regards to withdrawing funding from five organisations. Um, and we, may, we, we supported these recommendations on the basis of the discussion that we had at the Overview and Scrutiny Committee and also on the basis of what I felt were really some quite detailed discussions with um, officers in the pre-meeting before the Overview and Scrutiny Committee. Uh, we did ask that it was reported to committee, uh, to council, and made it clear that um, our support would be withdrawn if we felt that further matters came to, um, came to light. And I have to say that I feel that things have come to light, that um, the information that as it was set out in the paper before us at the committee was actually insufficient for us to be able to make a fair and reasonable decision as to whether or not to support the recommendations. Um, there are risks inherent in taking the decision to end the funding to these um, particular organisations and that I believe are greater than those outlined in the paper and possibly even greater than those highlighted by the Director of Housing in the paper. And here are the specific risks. First of all, um, in terms of ending the funding to the Stepping Stones Trust, I don't think that we were actually made um, aware at the Overview and Scrutiny Committee that this was an organisation that was supporting sex offenders. Um, these, they they uh, provide housing for five sex offenders who are currently housed in Wandsworth. They are not Wandsworth residents, but they live in Wandsworth, and therefore withdrawing funding to this organisation offers a substantial risk to our residents if these people are left without support. The ex-offenders um, that um, are supported by Stepping Stones actually receive intensive support and the organisation had hoped to embark on a rather innovative uh, new strand of support where they were going to recruit volunteers from faith-based organisations in, in the hope of offering sort of 24-hour support to these sex offenders. And obviously that has serious implications in a positive way for the community safety of our, our, um, in our borough. Um, what's more, the Stepping Stones Trust has an exemplary, rec exemplary record. There is, no, in, there is no record of any of the people that they have worked with reoffending at any point after they have um, left the Stepping Stones and support carries on ongoing for some time afterwards. So it's a critical um, form of service. If we look at some of the other... Um, funding that's going to be withdrawn. A substantial um, chunk of funding is going to be withdrawn from Grenfell Housing Association. This offers 24 units of housing for young people, all of whom have strong Wandsworth connections. And the withdrawal of funding for these people could well mean that these resources are lost for good. Once these housing units are lost, we will not get them back again. And that is the risk that we will be taking in making the decision to withdraw the funding to this organisation tonight. It is true, as it was said in the paper, that Wandsworth does not refer to this organisation, but the young people that Grenfell Housing puts into those 24 units do all come from Wandsworth. They are aged from 16 and above, and they're often people who have fallen through the gaps in housing provision, maybe people who've been given a tenancy too early in their life and they're unable to sustain it and therefore they need extra help and support in getting themselves straight for the future. Again, Grenfell Housing has an exemplary record and has a record of turning young lives around. In May, in a supported people uh, review of the service, they were re regarded as being strategically important and now in September they're regarded as being redundant. And the last one I would like us to look at is the refugee service that is offered to 36 people currently by Metropolitan Housing Partnership. 
They also receive additional funding, but there is no slack through that funding to take up the refugee services. And again, these services could be lost for good. These organisations also have things in common. They have a strong relationship with the Council Supporting People team. They felt that they were doing a good job and they were told that they were doing a good job. What's more, they have received no advance notification that these decisions were going on with regard to their specific funding. There's been no consultation process. The first that these organisations knew that their funding was in jeopardy was when they... I think I have my 30 seconds, Madam Mayor. You have your time. Is that so, Councillor Randall? May I finish my sentence? You may Can finish I your sentence. Interrupted by, by members and not by you, Madam Thank you. Mayor. Just finish the sentence, Councillor Randall. So, um, sorry, now I've lost my place. Um, <laughs> these organisations would be happy to work with the council to look at restructuring their offer. Thank you, Councillor Randall. <laughs> Councillor Usher. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, I am grateful to Councillor Randall for outlining her opinion of um, some of these organisations that we are proposing to um, withdraw funding from. Um, I don't therefore propose to um, answer her points, which I will leave to um, Councillor Madden, but I thought it might be helpful if I just reminded members of the Council who haven't actually had a chance possibly to read the whole paper, um, a little bit of background about the Supporting People programme um, and the numbers so that members can put this paper in the context of the current financial situation. Um, Supporting People was an initiative launched in 2003 by the then government to enable people with housing-related support needs to live independently in the community. Um, this involves a wide range of activities such as um, assistance with life schools, uh, skills, budgeting, managing a tenancy, how to claim benefits, etc. Um, it is targeted at very vulnerable people, including the homeless, people with mental health and substance abuse problems, women fleeing domestic um, violence, and um, others with specific needs from the BME um, background, backgrounds. Um, support is tailored to the needs of the individual and may include a home visit, an on-site full-time support worker, advice on home improvements, etc. And it can be permanently attached to a particular tenancy or be floated in and out in accordance with the fluctuating needs of individuals. Um, I would remind members that none of this support is statutory. This particular review concentrates on provision, um, as Councillor Randall has pointed out, for single homeless, rough sleepers, some ex fender services and refugees, but is part of an ongoing forensic examination of the Supporting People programme funded by Wandsworth, and the results of these uh, further reviews will be reported in the months to come. Um, to turn to numbers, um, in 2010-11, the total budget spent on supporting people was nearly £11 million um, and the total number of users, users accessing all the supporting people services was over 3,500. And although the largest user group was 2,200, which was older people, the largest spend is on people with mental health or drug and alcohol problems, which accounted for 41% of the budget. One of the findings of this review, and again, Councillor Randall touched on this, was that Wandworth was giving funding to these organisations when basically we no longer refer people to them. And the director and her staff have confirmed, and, and um, I'm sure Councillor Randall is aware of this, that there are other existing services which can be accessed in the borough. And I think that it is completely wrong that we should continue to fund organisations that don't actually provide services for Wandsworth residents. Members, the savings which will be achieved by this particular paper are £454,000 in the coming year. This is obviously a significant amount of money, but it's only part of the savings that Adult Social Services is being asked to achieve. As a council, and as Councillor Senior has already said, we do have to remind ourselves that we have a statutory duty to present a balanced budget. We have no option. We do not have our own Bank of England or even Bank of Wandsworth to give us quantitative easing. We have to find these savings by ourselves and the decisions which we are asked to, be, to, to make are tough. They are difficult, they are painful, but they have to be made. This is only the beginning as further savings will have to be found not just for next year or the year after, but also the year after that. 
but I do hope that we can all work together to achieve the necessary balanced budget and at the same time to continue to give Wandsworth residents the standard and quality of service that they require. Thank you, Councillor Usher. Councillor Osborne. Uh, in the bound papers, this paragraph is simply headed supporting people, a disturbingly Orwellian piece of doublespeak for a proposal to abandon people to their fate. Um, we've heard some uh, interesting things about the, uh, this decision regarding these five organisations. Uh, it's been asserted, for example, that uh, the reason why these organisations are being cut is because we no longer refer cases to them. Actually, that is not the reason given anywhere in the documentation. What has happened in this paper is there's actually been a rather disturbing sleight of hand used here. Councillor Madden's paper has not been entirely straight with the members of this council. There are two justifications for the cuts. One is value for money. There is a suggestion later in the paper to say, well, actually, we don't know for certain what's going to happen as a result of these cuts. Um, it might even be more expensive as a result of these cuts. We're not sure. Uh, so there's a question mark over the value for money bit anyway. But listen to the other justification. Serv not, we're not referring people to these organisations, but services must be matched to the demand from Wandsworth residents. Later on it says, we would retain services within the borough sufficient to meet the current demand for these services. After that it says, these cuts propose decommissioning of services that are in excess of the needs of Wandsworth residents. It couldn't be clearer. It's about demand from Wandsworth residents, not referrals to the organisation. We know from the response of some of the organisations, Stepping Stone, for example, they challenge the validity of what's being suggested here. And there's been a bit of unseemly toing and froing between Stepping Stone and the Council. Um, they're trying to defend themselves, and the Council has issued a series of rebuttals to their points. Some of the rebuttals, I have to say, I don't want to go into detail about them because most councillors haven't seen them. But some of the rebuttals, I think, are questionable, and some of the points from Stepping Stone have simply not been answered. But... That uncalled for exchange tells us one thing. It tells us that the statutory guidance on value for money issued by Eric Pickles MP, Secretary of State for Communities and Local Government, has not been followed. It says an authority should actively engage the organisation and service users as early as possible before making a decision on the future of the service. Any knock-on effect on assets should you used to provide this service and the wider impact on the local community. Authorities should make provision for the organisations, service users and wider community to put forward options on how to reshape the service or project. Where was the engagement? Where was the opportunity to reshape, given other options? That didn't happen. And that didn't happen because we didn't do what we were supposed to do. But well done for Stepping Stone for alerting us to that fact and raising this issue with us. Because it meant that Councillor Randall and I recognised that the fox hunting season was over and it was time to go fishing and talking to the five organisations to find out what had actually happened. Organisations said to us things like, you know, if somebody had talked to us about what was going on and said what the criteria were and they'd changed, we might have adapted. But they didn't get a chance to do that. Organisations who said all we got was a fax, an email and a letter telling us the contract was coming up in, uh, would, would be terminated in six months. One only got a fax. One organisation said the vast majority of our users are Wandsworth residents. We can't understand why anybody would think we don't meet Wandsworth's demand. Another said our, uh, we're dealing with 100% Wandsworth residents. The point is, you see, it wasn't based on whether or not they met Wandsworth demand. It was based on whether Wandsworth Council was referring cases to them. That was the measure used and it wasn't an accurate measure of whether or not they were catering for Wandsworth residents or not. And worse than that, it was entirely in the gift of Wandsworth Council. It was as much a black spot pressed into your palm in Treasure Island dooming you as it could be. What we've got is a paper that isn't quite straight with us. That's actually the second time since May 2010 that this directorate has come up, Councillor Madden's directorate has come up with a paper which falls short on standard, 
which hasn't been shared with councillors, and Councillor Madden now has to wriggle around and see if he can find an answer for it. I urge this council to vote against this paragraph, and I'd be interested to know when Councillor Madden is going to dedicate on these matters of the directorate. Councillor Mr Mayor, can I just um, invite um, Councillor Osborne to rethink his final couple of sentences? Uh, perhaps on reflection he might want to. Mr Osborne? No, I'll stick by what I say. Point of order, Mr. Mayor. Standing order 21D, uh, Councillor Osborne is actually, uh, as I understand it... Excuse me, on a point of order, can Councillor Grimston read 21D out for us, please, uh, so that we know what we're talking about? I'm not about. sure we've got them in here. Yes, 21D... No, I think you're making it up, actually. Well... <laughs> Bobby, read understand. it. Ms. Madam Mayor... I haven't used a gavel before, but I am now. I do have the standing orders, and I can read out 21D if you haven't got them, Councillor Grimston. I, I believe it's 21D, but it's the standing order that makes it incompetent for any member of this House to make any reference to uh, the activity or performance of any member of, uh, of staff of this Council without first uh, the Council considering the motion to clear the gallery. It's absolutely outrageous and completely against the, the tradition of this Council to make a tax on, on uh, officers of this authority without clearing the Chamber first, because I don't uh, believe that this authority's practice uh, is to attack our staff in that kind of way when they have no uh, option to, to answer those charges. Thank you, Councillor Grimston. I wouldn't dream of it. wouldn't dream of attacking a member of staff in this council. I think the comment... <laughs> let me finish. Let me finish. I made it quite clear at the beginning uh, in, the in the proceedings in this council, my... Uh, admiration and respect for officers in this council when we were talking about uh, Peter Brennan. I, I was careful to make it absolutely clear that my concern is that Councillor Madden, who will sign off all these papers, is at fault here. And that's a political point. It, I think we'll call on Councillor Madden now. Councillor Madden. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think... Um, bearing in mind I only have a limited amount of time and a lot of been, points have been raised by the party opposite, um, rather than uh, delving into what I was going to say, um, I think it's appropriate that I should um, try and rebut some of the uh, allegations made by Councillor Osborne and Councillor Randall, particularly in relation to the Stepping Stones Trust. I don't know where they've got their information from, but uh, certainly uh, Councillor Osborne said that uh, the response to the Stepping Stones Trust uh, inquiry was uh, short on explanation. It runs to five pages and I'm thoroughly convinced and I've seen this and I'm, uh, I believe wholeheartedly that everything said in this response and the rebuttal of the points raised by the chairman of the Stepping Stones Trust is, that, uh, is accurate uh, and is not uh, short on uh, fact. Um, I would... Um, suggest further that uh, both Councillor Randall and Councillor Osborne have probably been led up the garden path by the chair of the Stepping Stones Trust. The Stepping Stones Trust is an organisation which possibly in today's age would not be supported by the Council because they have, and I'm not criticising them for this, they have strong religious component to their ethos. Um, they refer... The, their uh, client base is referred to them by the chaplain from Wandsworth Prison. This would approach would likely have a strong negative impact on non-Christian offenders using the service and would effectively dissuade them from using the service at all. And one of the homes run by the Stepping Stones Trust, which is in uh, the London Borough of Croydon, attendance at meetings for prayer, prayer and Christian teaching is called for. And again, that is not something that we in this part, in this side of the house, would uh, wholeheartedly support. Not that there's anything wrong with prayer, prayer and Christian teaching, but it's not it's something that uh, the, uh, if we're going to be an inclusive uh, organisation, we wouldn't uh, support an organisation which is, um, has those uh, values. Um, the second thing I would like to mention is that um, in an email I've seen in relation to uh, Croydon, um, the 
uh, chair of the Stepping Stones Trust, recommends uh, to Croydon a particular path which would allow for Croydon ex-offender services to be exported um, to another borough, i.e. Wandsworth. So they're suggesting that it's uh, right that uh, the residents of uh, Croydon, their sex offenders, should not be forced to live in that borough but be moved to, to the borough of Wandsworth. I think the Stepping Stones Trust have got a lot of questions that they need to answer. Um, I endorse what Councillor Usher said. Supporting people is a non-statutory service and it's important that we realise the essence of the services provided are intended to assist individuals. However valuable the programme is, it is also important to remind ourselves that in these financial times, it's inevitable that it is the non-statutory service that get looked at first. By the very nature of statutory services, these are the areas which we should be concentrating on. They're the areas where we should be focusing our resources. It's an important part of the Equalities Act of 2010 that the Council in making any decision has due regard to the need to eliminate discrimination and advance equality of opportunity. And that's why, as with every decision that we make, an EIA has been produced, an Equalities Impact Assessment, and the EIA found that there was no adverse impact. And to take this further, the assessment found that all of the services, bar the refugee service, of a non-specialised generic nature, and as such, the small number of service users will be able to be supported by other services within Wandsworth. We don't take decisions involving these groups of residents lightly, and I'm satisfied that other services exist within the borough which have an appropriate and volume of provision to meet the demand within Wandsworth. I'd like to take this opportunity to reassure members that despite the assertions to the contrary, I do not like cutting services. I'm not Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street, and for that matter, the chairman of the Adult Care Services OSC is not Mrs Lovett. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with the story, she used to cut up their bodies and make pies out of them. We have to make cuts. We have to protect our statutory services. We have to rein back on some of our non-statutory services, particularly those which are duplicated elsewhere in the borough and are not providing value for money for our council taxpayers. And I hope, take this opportunity to wholeheartedly endorse the work that is done by the Department of Adult Care Services, the Director and all her staff. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Madden. The motion now before the Council is to receive a paragraph two of the Executive Report in relation to the Supporting People Review. Please indicate by a show of hands those to the motion. Those three, four, the motion, those against? Ten against. Any abstentions? The result of the voting is 33, four, ten against. The motion is carried.